Hi guys, just a quick video. Um, the main chamber heater that I use to hold my chamber at a set temperature um, has finally died uh, yesterday. Um, I thought I would try printing without the chamber temp the chamber heater in there working. Um, the ambient temperature in this printer builds up to around about 36 degrees, maybe 38, um, and holds that without any chamber heater. That's just from the bed heater alone, but that's still not enough to um, prevent warping and splitting on ABS. So here's the results with no heater whatsoever. I can get the camera to focus which it doesn't usually like to do because it's rubbish which it still doesn't like to do it is a terrible camera how can it not focus on that I've no idea but there you go a huge split and it's splitting above in different places I know it's not the, the, the cleanest extrusion, but usually I'm, I, I over extrude to make sure it stays well bonded together on each layer. But it hasn't made no difference here. Without the chamber heater, you can just see split, split, start having a split. So yeah, without the chamber heater holding this at an ambient temperature this print has failed really bad split there and uh, the, temper in the, sh the temperature in the chamber was held at about 37 f for the entire print just by the heat bed but it's, it's still not enough so I need to replace the heat the heater that I use for this chamber so here's what I used to use, believe it or not, um, anyone that's seen my earlier videos would know this is what I've done. This is basically a 2 kilowatt iron faceplate. You can see there it's um, totally died. Originally it was only a, uh, a test, I was just going to test this and I installed this a year ago with a K-type thermocouple and two temperature stats. These were also fixed in place to protect it. It was controlled, believe it or not, using just uh, an Arduino Mega. I don't know if you can see that buried in there. Um, it is a bit of a mess. and it was all sort of monitored and controlled from in here and it was just you know it's a bit of a messy install but sits on sits in that watertight enclosure underneath the water water cooling so um, and it was just turned on with a switch and then monitored like that um, but nonetheless it's died that is the end of that chamber heater so I need to replace it to carry on printing ABS so uh, yeah decided to do uh, a better better job and get something proper so this is all I was using it's an old heat sink out of a variable speed drive an industrial variable speed drive I think the drive was rated at I think 35 36 kilowatts so a huge drive and that's where I got the heat sink from I tend to where I get most of my parts from is old uh, soft starts and uh, variable speed drives which are an excellent source of components but anyway so here's what I've now got for my chamber heater so I've sourced another large heat sink from a variable speed drive and I've had it machined flat so it's been nice and skimmed 
there are a few holes in it um, but they shouldn't affect it too much I would have thought and I've gone to these guys and these guys are professionals in the uh, temperature process measurement uh, field they're called Thermosense and uh, they sell some excellent products like I say they are professionals in the uh, temperature monitoring and heating field so um, you know these guys really know what they're they're doing and um, I basically bought a heat mat from them which is a uh, a 400 watt silicon heater and that will be mounted on there like so with a K-type silicon thermocouple sensor and instead of using the Arduino and all that rubbish and the LCD I'm going to use a dedicated temperature controller it's just a thermostat basically that takes a K-type thermocouple input so this is going to be my new heater for my chamber, a uh, properly machined heat sink, nice and flat, a decent heater, silicon heater, actually rated at 240 volts, which is quite hard to find these heaters rated for 240, a lot are rated for 220, but not for 240, and uh, it can make a difference on the lifespan of your heating element believe you me so um, it's the right voltage for my country which is the UK and our nominal voltage is 240 volts plus or minus 20% um, which is uh, it's quite a lot really so um, there we go that's the new heat mat and the new uh, heat sink a new K-type thermocouple which can go up to I think 350 degrees this one's rated for not that this heater will ever get that high um, and there's the new temperature controller Let's see what model this is it's an STP 322SA and uh, I think the temperature controller the K-type thermocouple and the heat mat came to around about 60 pounds I believe 60 70 pounds so not a huge expense and the, the heat sink was reclaimed so that didn't really cost me a lot and uh, it was mates rates to get this skimmed back so overall the heaters probably cost me about 80 pound and um, will be a lot better than my original Heath Robinson knock up which is uh, which was done with that and an old iron and um, yes yeah, so my original chamber heater guys has died that is the end of that that's the end of the the old uh, Kenwood iron or I think it was Kenwood something like that that's the end of, of that Let's do this job properly this time. Um, I proved the chamber heater is uh, essential for ABS printing. ABS printing large solid structures anyway. So the heater's dead. My printer is almost useless without it. Um, it will print and it prints fine, but the prints just aren't structurally strong. So yeah, I need to build a, uh, a new heater and quickly assemble it and get it back in there because um, I'm now behind with my order of parts so here we are guys this is what I'm doing with the chamber heater anyone wants to do something similar this is what I suggest you should probably do as a as a heat source and um, this one should last a lot longer than my previous solution so there we are guys just a quick 10 minute video it's coming up 9 minutes 30 something seconds so I'll cut this short now I shall get on and assemble this and um, maybe do another video just to show it installed and see it operating so that's it for now cheers guys